something happened. There's no doubt about that. There was something dreadful that went on between the two of them. shot through the heart. And nobody knows what really happened to Horace. I mean, it could have been an accident. Kitty maintains that it wasn't, that it was just all the pressure it was too much for her. But it was a great tragedy, such a tragedy. I remember Horace as, as a sort of the most polite and considerate of people. He was good mannered to his fingertips though. He was so old fashioned in that kind of way, you know, it's an awful lot of things. Every time he'd see a woman he'd be dabbing his hat and you know, all these old fashioned things. I don't I certainly didn't know him intimately. I don't know who did know him int intimately. But he was um, very sort of benign. Um, you know, and as a child, I didn't feel awkward with him or uncomfortable, though he was so very so formal. I suppose is what he was. You know, it's a, uh, and people just completely lost that formality of previous generations. And Kitty was, um, I suppose, she was the housekeeper, but she was really his right-hand woman. And they'd probably grown up together and had known each other all their lives. And she came to help him and they fell in love. But Kitty was vivacious. That Kitty was always just would say, Oh, how are you at all? Come in, come in, come in, you know, and she was lovely. And and great and she she was a great to Horace there. It was, she did everything, you know, rounding cattle or whatever it would be. She was just an all-rounder, really. Um, she was very, very good that way. He had a dry sense of humour. He was very proper and uh, you know, old-fashioned, wonderful old-fashioned manners, um, fair, just a, a nice guy, very nice man. I've never really heard a bad word said about Anderson, except Oliver, when it came up to, to the marriage with Kitty and, and that, that Oliver um, took opposing sides and, and he and Harris were at loggerheads. The 
I have no doubt but that they they actually adored each other. You know, Harris. You know, and 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 she and definitely. I mean, she she adored Harris. There's no doubt about that. It was quite scandalous. They disapproved of the relationship because she was from a different class. She was Catholic. Horace had promised his father he wouldn't let the estate fall into Catholic hands. So, you know, it was tough to come to terms with that. But it's where people um, snubbed her. In, like at funerals in places, people would come around to Horace, and 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 she was invisible. She said that her relationship with Horace was so strong, and Horace was so understanding, and Horace would would explain to her that this was how people and it's how society was and everything. But it didn't make any difference to him. Oliver was not at all keen on the relationship that Horace was having with Kitty because he knew this terrible secret that Horace had, um, that his father had had this second family on the Blackwater up the way and that Kitty was probably the offspring and that she was probably Horace's half-sister. The night before the wedding, Oliver and Horace met in Ardmore and they had this conversation. He'd gone to see Oliver and then it was when he came back. Um, I think she told me that, you know, that, that he, he, he was very distressed when he came back. Horace shot himself through the heart. And Oliver knew that he'd committed suicide because he was an excellent shot. But of course at the time they had to say that he tripped and his gun had misfired. But Oliver said afterwards that he knew he'd shot himself because it was right through the heart. There was nobody for her but Horace. And th the question of her ever, I think, ever marrying up never, never even came up. I mean, she went into mourning as soon as Horace died, you know, she remained that way. <laughs>